In this out of hours compilation, our Bondi vets are always on call to save lives outside the usual nine to five. So we don't really know what we're going to, but it sounds urgent. From a marathon birth lasting long into the night. We need to go to the practice, we need to get into surgery, and let's just hope that the puppies survive. To a shocking scare close to home. When it's your own animal, it's just so much more emotional and distressing. And even a surprise midnight visitor. I'm not going to lie to you, I'm a little bit out of a comfort zone. There ain't no rest for our Bondi vets. Now I can go and have some sleep. I don't know if I've had enough coffee today to do what we're about to do. Scott and Emma are on their way to St Margaret's after getting an SOS call from Sophie and her husband Tom. Tonight's the night, Bonnie. Their much-loved Bonnie is having her first litter of pups, and she's overdue. I think she's shaking a bit. She is. There's a lot of panting, and so I think she's going to be very soon. Come on, darling. Hi! Hi, Hi expectant grandmother. <laughs> How are you? Everybody, the vet's here. Hello, everybody. Very good to see you. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, Scott. Tom. I'm very glad Scott is here because if we were doing this on our own, I would be very concerned by now that things hadn't done exactly what the textbook said. Let's just have a little feel. Wow. <laughs> That's one full dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're about to pop, aren't you, sweetheart? So I'm so grateful that he's here, making sure that we won't be left alone and that she won't be suffering. All right, so I'm just going to have a little look. Good girl, oh, brave oh, bunny. Cervix is just starting to dilate. Now, I can also feel the puppy's heads are about this big. So they may be like sort of the size of a large plum. So that's how big her cervix has to be in order to pass the puppies. All right. You look nervous, you're yeah, right. Yeah, I am nervous. <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose, yeah, I'm worried that that won't get big enough to get those heads yeah. out. Yeah, so we just need to work together. We need to be patient and we need to make strategic decisions in order to get the best result possible. It's felt like a long time. It's been days we've been on tenterhooks, actually. And so tonight's the night. I just hope so much. <laughs> Three hours later, and Scott's worried the labour is moving too slowly. We should see more contractions. We should see more attempts at sort of getting these puppies out, and we're just not seeing that. So what we have to do is just be careful that we're not letting it go on too long um, because, of course, then we can start having worries and concerns about the puppies. One more hour goes by and Scott decides to give Bonnie a shot of oxytocin. The drug is used to stimulate contractions. Oh, she's a good girl. So great. That's right. Good girl. That's it. Good girl. Push now. Come on, Good girl. Come on, honey. That's a big one. Come on, there we go. Come on. It's so frustrating because I, I can feel this puppy. It's it's just at the end of my fingertips. But it's just not progressing down the birthing canal and out. It, she's pushing and it comes, and then as soon as she stops pushing, it just jumps back into the abdomen. We should definitely have had a puppy by now. And I'm just starting to get concerned that this puppy is getting a little distressed. The chances of a successful home birth are fading fast. A lot more nerve-wracking than I thought it would be. And I'm amazed how close I feel to her. You know, just the fear behind her little eyes. I do feel for her. Just whatever you can do that's the best for her yeah. and the pup. Finally, Scott is forced to make a tough decision. He's now convinced a caesarean section is the only option for Bonnie. I'm really starting to worry about the condition of the puppies now. What we need to do is get them out. And none of us want to go down the route of emergency surgery, but I do need to keep Bonnie's health in mind as well as the puppies. Come on, baby. Luckily, Sophie and Tom have just found a babysitter next door, so they're ready to go. We need to go to the practice, we need to get into surgery, and let's just hope that the puppies survive. Good girl. Guys, that's it. There you go. There we go. By the time they arrive at the practice, Bonnie has been in labour for seven hours. Hey, Nath. 
Nurse Nathan has already arrived to help out. Thank you very much for coming quite so quickly. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Sleepy time now, OK? So say goodbye. So you guys are going to see you go to sleep, and then we'll get you to pop up to the waiting room, OK, while we get the surgery done. I hope that everything's OK, because you never know. I mean, maybe there's something wrong. It's all going to okay. happen pretty quickly now. <laughs> okay. OK. I really hope that everything's good and that there's lots of little ones there. OK. All right, baby. OK, here we go. Just wish I didn't have to do this, poor thing. To be very careful with this incision because the babies are very, very close and they're very packed full in this tummy of hers. All right, babies, all right, you come. OK, who's on baby catching duty, Ems? I'm on. OK, all right, OK, you ready? Yep. OK, here you go. All right, little pups, come on, little pups. OK, do the swing if you need to. Yep. Em, and like rub harder than you think you should. Emma is trying to clear the fluid from the puppy's throat and nose to help it start breathing. Any luck? No, not yet. The second puppy is also grey and lifeless. I'm really worried about the health of the puppies. They should absolutely be making sounds by now, and they're not. Come on. They're not crying, they're not doing anything. I'm just so concerned that this is going to end really badly for Sophie and Tom. Come on, Apples. Come on. With Emma and Nathan desperately trying to kickstart the first two puppies breathing. Oh, Sophie, she can come down. Scott has no choice but to enlist the terrified Sophie to help puppy number three. So I'm going to give you the puppy, and then what you're going to have to do is carefully don't touch anything green. That's it, pull back. So, ah, don't touch that either. <laughs> no, no, no. Just stand where you are, stay still. I'm quite anxious. I've never done this before. And the thought of their life being in my hands is nerve-wracking. And what you're going to do is you're going to rub it really firmly on the chest, OK, really firmly, and stimulate. Ems, can you help Sophie with that one? Just watch whilst yep. tell her to do what you're doing. Yep. Have you got movement in yours yet, Ems? Yep. Yeah, Sophie's just taken over mine. I've just taken over hers. <laughs> do we keep doing it after? Yeah, we just, yeah. We just, we just keep, keep doing. Keep, keep going. Yeah, I've never done anything so terrifying in my life. <laughs> <laughs> This evening cannot bring any more shocks and surprises, and it's just incredible. But there are more shocks to come. Oh, my God. Have you got a fourth one in there? <laughs> I've not just got a fourth. you got a fifth. <laughs> I've got a fifth as well. So, um, oh, gosh, have I even got a... I might even have a sixth. <laughs> right, OK. Someone needs to brush up on his ultrasound skills. Oh, my goodness. Come on, open your mouth, come on. We've got mouth movements from, from everyone. Oh, good. It's <laughs> nice to see that, isn't it? To see that. Mouth movements. Just remember to keep rubbing. We need to keep, keep them stimulated. We don't want any of this to stop. Vet nurse Gina has also arrived with another much-needed set of hands. Ems, how's it going out there? Okay, and it seems the team effort One, is two, finally getting three, results. Three, four, five, six, breathing puppy! Hey, <laughs> good job. Well done. <laughs> and then, at last, the sound they've all been waiting to hear. Oh, I did hear oh, a squeak. Oh, it's squeaking. You're going to wriggle away, little dude. Come back. I'm feeling so emotional. I'm, I'm welling up. It's so special that we're able to bring in life. <laughs> it's, um, it's a privilege. It's a complete privilege that we're, we're able to do it. Yeah, I do, I do feel like I'm missing out. I can hear those cute noises, and I'm yet to see them. They sound gorgeous. And as a vet, you love animals and cute little puppies and six of them in a row. It's incredible. I mean, it's, it's incredible. Hi, love, it's me. Sophie can't wait okay, so to share the news with husband and, um, Tom, who so returned home earlier to look after their three children. Um, but there's actually more than three. There's six. <laughs> Good to see. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I know. They are so beautiful. Oh, we're goodness. squeaking, we're wiggling. Oh, we're making oh. me cry. <laughs> oh, you're fantastic. Oh. It's 4 a.m. when Tom arrives back after finding another babysitter. How amazing. <gasps> 
Oh, they are tiny. Yeah. Oh my goodness, they're absolutely perfect. <laughs> I, I, I can't tell you how happy I am. I'm so pleased. I'm really pleased that Bonnie's doing well as well because, you know, she's done a big job tonight. You know, it's been a big day and I think she's been amazing. We Six were perfect little really puppies. Really worried when um, when it had to be a cesarean. I really worried, and uh, to have such a wonderful result, it's just perfect. Yeah, it's amazing. She's still sleeping, but she's here. Oh, well, that's just amazing. Thank you. We feel like she's in very safe hands. Yeah. Well, I'm actually, very pleased. Of course, you were there right from the start because, you know, if, we, if you hadn't been there, I'm not sure we would have seen all the six puppies and Bonnie the following morning. So. Yeah. It's been amazing, so thank you very, very no, much. No worries, it has, it has been well, amazing. It has been We're amazing. We're forever bonded now. <laughs> yeah. Hey? Hey, is that you coming back? Hi, Bonnie. Beautiful puppies. I think she can probably hear them. You've got a big family to look after now, so you must get better. Yeah. She does. Have a few hours of rest, and then I think it's all going to start, yeah? yeah? yeah. Mm. I think six babies at once. Oh. Can you yeah. imagine? <laughs> <laughs> so you guys want to go and see the kids, get some yes. sleep. Yeah. yeah. And we'll see you tomorrow. Six puppies. I know. What a result. <laughs> a result. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go and tell the kids. Yes. Tomorrow, Bonnie will be introduced to her new babies. Morning. Morning. But tonight, she needs to rest and recover from the surgery. Oh, and doesn't that make it all worthwhile? It really does. Scott and Emma will be keeping an eye on them all until the morning shift arrives. What an amazing, exhilarating, at times scary, but fantastic experience. And people might think that we as vets and vet nurses must do this all the time. Honestly, we don't. And it's just as special for us as it is for Sophie and her family. It's time we've got to be serving coffee in Richmond, surely. At four in the morning? Oh, there must sorry. be somewhere. <laughs> Here we go. I told Ooh. you they were coming. Oh, look at that little bundle of joy. Okay. Next day, after just a few hours sleep, a weary Scott's back at the practice to check up on Bonnie and her six puppies. So two boys, four girls. Practice manager Maz is the latest to fall under their spell. That's a little very vocal girl. Yeah, one of them standing right next to you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I should have you. No, no, I won't. Oh, look, I love baby. Oh, I know, I know. Good girl, you're cleaning them. Clever girl. Oh, those maternal instincts are really kicking in now, aren't they? Last night after she recovered from the anaesthetic, Bonnie really wasn't that interested in her puppies. Uh, fair enough. But this morning, thankfully, she is all over them. She absolutely loves them and she's being a great mum. So there's um, two that are kind of caramelly coloured. Tom and, and Sophie are back at Richmond are, um, with a very excited um, Tess, a bit more Harry pale and, and Rose. Curly. They're about to meet Bonnie's babies for the first time. Here we are. Oh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> to see those kids' faces light up is just incredible. It's the reason that Sophie and Tom did this in the first place, is to just show them the, the joys of birth, and uh, that's exactly what we've given them. They're so adorable. It's really amazing holding little life in your hands. It's just, like, amazing. Yeah. It is. How can you tell? Uh, you know what, ask your parents. Uh, honestly, I, um, yeah, I've got three kids of my own. I'm going to have those conversations at some point. I'm going to leave that to you, all right? <laughs> I'll explain the veterinary stuff. You can do birds and bees, all right? <laughs> Scott is still making up his mind whether he wants to adopt one of the puppies. But he's got plenty of time to decide. It will be at least eight weeks before the pups are strong enough to leave Bonnie and go to their new homes. All right. It's okay, Thank you so much so for it's everything. Okay. I think it's going to be a fairly chaotic household, but with three kids and one dog already, I think we've already got enough chaos there. Just adding another layer. <laughs> but thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> You're welcome. You're very welcome. I cannot wait to see them grow up and see what little personalities come out of those little fairy bundles. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye. Oh. Now I can go and have some sleep. <laughs>
Chris is called back to the clinic for an emergency. Just received a call to a dog that's been hit by a car. I don't know too many details, but apparently it's in a bad way, especially one of its legs and its feet. Hey. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, Chris. Hey, Thomas. Good day. Hey, Brad. This is Brad. Brad. How are you? Who's this? Toby. this is Toby. Hey, Toby. Did you see him get hit? No, no I'd gone back to get my other dog off the street. 14-month-old Toby has just been run over by a taxi on a busy Sydney road. Excuse me, should I move? There's a bit of blood on the road. You're right, Toby, stay there. You can just comfort him and just make sure he knows he's OK. You're right, Toby, stay. The schnoodle has severe lacerations to his back legs and is having trouble breathing. The one thing that can be a problem for them is in the impact they can tear a blood vessel in their chest in their lungs and if they bleed into that then obviously they, they can't breathe yeah. through blood. Okay, he's very excitable, happy dog. That's what this is, the stillness is what worries me. Yeah. Wait till mummy and daddy see you tomorrow. Why don't they get a surprise? Dog sitters Thomas and Brad have no idea how they're going to break the news to Toby's owners. They're on a sailing holiday in Queensland. And they've been sending me text messages saying, missing our boy, missing our boy. So he's been really good, he's been really good, except he doesn't come when called. And he didn't tonight. My priority right now is, is not so much his legs, not so much his injuries, but addressing his circulation, just making sure he can breathe, making sure he can pump that blood around his body, because if that doesn't happen, then we could be in trouble. His gum colour's OK, which, which is positive, so... If he is losing blood, he hasn't lost a lot of it. One of the big problems with an impact with a car is that they can essentially tear part of their lung, which releases all the air and stops the, the pressure they need in their chest to, to breathe properly. So to make sure he has that negative pressure in his chest. So we're going to put a needle into his chest and just suck out any air that, that could be a problem. Yeah, OK, so we're getting air coming out there. So he's actually got a pneumothorax. A pneumothorax means air is leaking between Toby's lungs and his chest wall. If not treated, it can kill him. The worry isn't so much his broken leg, that can heal, but a pneumothorax can get serious real quick, really quick. So what I do is, is essentially put in a, a valve here where we can suck the air out. Good boy, Toby. So every syringe full of air that we get out of this chest is another a lot of air that that he can actually breathe in, so this is good if we get this air out now. Good boy. Your mummy's going to be very proud of you. Toby's owners are on holidays in the Whit Sundays, and his remorseful dog sitters are hoping Chris can save the schnoodle's life. Left the kid at home in safe hands, apparently. Come on. You're right, Toby. Come on. I'm just going to support his weight as a whole. Despite Toby still being in shock, Chris now needs x-rays to confirm just how severe Toby's other injuries are. You're right. All right, Toby, you guys can jump out. OK. Right. All right, you guys can come back in. Toby's x-ray results are ready. I'm a little bit surprised by what we're seeing for the fact that I'm not seeing any fractures. You must be the luckiest dog in Surrey Hills, I reckon. Yeah. I came in here tonight and when I first looked in, I was thinking that this dog is gonna need weeks in hospital having fractures repaired. Whereas it might now be a day. Okay, that's... Can you fix me before his parents gonna come tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Chris can now start cleaning up Toby's wounds. You're right, Tobe. Come on. Come on, Tobe. Halfway there, Tobe. Tobe, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. So he may not like these, but he's got two more injections. So what he's got is an antibiotic, first of all. Does that one burn a bit? No. No? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> that was um, good, Tobe. You have already tangled with a cab tonight, so just let's try and keep it in perspective. <laughs> OK? I know it's tough for you. I know it's a hard night for you. That's it for the needles, all right? Did you want to call yeah, his owners? Sure. Zoe. Yeah, Zoe. Do you know what you, what you need to say? No, I don't. I, I'd use bumped rather than hit. 
voicemail. voicemail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's Thomas. Just want to let you know we've at the vet at the moment with Toby. Um, we've been here for a couple of hours. He had a bit of a run in with a taxi. Um, he doesn't appear to have anything broken. If you can give me a call when you get this message, that would be great. Sorry about that. And he's okay. He's okay. He's, he's okay. Sorry. He's actually okay. That's my thing. But he's um, just a bit wimply. But he always is. Anyway, call me. <laughs> Got it. That went well. That's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? That went well. He <laughs> did the best he can do. So it's... Chris rechecks Toby's punctured lung to make sure it's healing. You're all right, buddy. You're all right. Come on. Yeah, that's good. So there's just no air flowing into that syringe. So that's good. Well done, Tobes. Well done. For Thomas and Brad, the night from hell is over with a miraculous happy ending. Be tough than I thought. I'll give you that. That's remarkable and truly incredible. All I can think is that young dogs do tend to miraculously bounce out of these situations. Yeah, we'll call him Super Toby for now on. Toby's Super Dog. How you doing? I feel a bit frazzled. Could be a tumour or something, but I don't really want to entertain that thought until like I'm faced with that in front of me. In Melbourne, vet Danny and partner Will have had an extremely distressing morning with their beloved dog Bear. It's okay, Bear. It's okay. Oh, pup. Will, my partner, woke up uh, to a banging sound. And I've just seen Bear just in the middle of a, a grand mal seizure. So she's just paddling and uh, you know, in a real tonic sort of state. It's just the most horrific thing to see happen to your own animal. I think there's something different about it being a patient in a hospital setting, everything's so controlled, you know what's going on, um, you know, you've got all your medications there, everything to, to act, but when it's your own animal, it's just so much more emotional and distressing. A huge shock because this is the first time this has ever happened. She's come out of the seizure. Uh, she's not neurologically normal yet. She's pacing around, she's panting, she's wanting to drink a lot. She seems really ravenous. She's hanging around the fridge. Just want to see how quickly she sort of gets through this phase and recovers. Hey. Sit. She's got a calm hey. pup. Sit. Calm. Three hours later, the signs are promising. What have we got here, Buzz? Hey. Bear's still slightly agitated, but much to Danny's relief, she's almost back to her old self. Bear is full of energy, full of love. She loves every human uh, she meets. Are you got it? You got it? She's just our best mate. We just want to have her with us all the time, wherever we go. She's the best company. Good old Bear, she's back. Will's also relieved. Big, gentle Bear has helped him through some tough times. I got her as a puppy. She's been great for me after discharging from the military a fair few years ago now. Um, she was a great companion, so that's been great. But Danny is still anxious to get to the bottom of Bear's sudden early morning seizure. Of course, my emotional brain is just leaping to the worst case scenario. The first thing I'm worried about is that she has a brain tumour. So, yeah, we really just need to get more information to know why this is happening. She'll be right. You've had a big... But big we morning. will get to the bottom of it. We will get you sorted. She's my baby. She's um, everything. All right, just sit, sit down. Stay. Just sit down. Stay there. All right, so I'll just check um, how well she's seeing yep. things. Now the bear has somewhat recovered from this seizure, I want to do a neurological examination. Oh, puppy. So what are you so doing? Seeing, essentially, she doesn't know this is coming and she's seeing it drop in front of her yep. face, but it's not got a smell, it's not got a sound or anything, so it means that she is seeing. Mm. So that's good. Hey. Yeah, good girl. Just 
checking By checking bear's reflexes and response to light, Girl. Danny can work out if there are any early signs of brain abnormality. Good job, puppy doggy. Hey. All right, so I'm really happy. Yeah. That looks all normal. The girl, normal. The girl boys dog. Sorry. I'm sorry. Is it fun? I'm sorry. I am really happy with the results on that examination. I couldn't see any abnormalities there, so that is a good sign at this stage. So the next step for Bear is to get some bloods, just to rule out anything that's going on outside of her nervous system um, that could be causing these neurological signs. Fair enough. Oh, good meal. You get the picture in your head that you're going to have a dog that lives for, you know, however long their life expectancy is. And then to sort of suddenly think, oh, she could be gone in you know, a matter of months, weeks, days, and it's not known, do we have more, more answers? Yeah, it's scary. In you come. Good girl. This way. Good girl. It's just a short trip to the nearby vet clinic where Danny works. Hey, Lou. Hi, Danny. I've just brought Bear in because um, I want to get some bloods. She's of had a uh, seizure this morning. Oh, no, dear. So I'm really not sure what's going on. I am hoping that it's just something like epilepsy that we can manage. Yeah, um, of course. But it's yeah. the first seizure, so. We'll just have to Start get some, yeah, yeah, get yeah, some yeah, information. Definitely. Come on, Bear, up and get. Oh, yeah. Vet nurse Louise is helping Danny take Bear's blood sample. Alrighty, Bear. Good job, almost there. Almost there. There we go. Good girl. Oh, right, beautiful. Girl. The findings will hopefully give Danny more clues about what's caused Bear's distressing seizure. One of the hardest things about being a vet and a pet owner is when something does go wrong, you know uh, what the range of things could be. From the simplest thing all the way to the most sinister. So it can be incredibly stressful and I do get very clouded in my thoughts. I'm a bit nervous waiting to get those blood results. I'm really crossing my fingers that nothing comes up on them today. All those bloods there, are they? Yes, we okay. do have them for Bear. Let's see. Ones for you. For Danny, it's the moment of truth. Bear's blood test results. Okay, good. So there's nothing going on outside of the brain, it looks like, that no. could be causing that. So that's yeah. really good. Good. Thank you. Yay. Yay. What's your doggy? Good that's job, doggy. Papa. All right. We're not out of the woods, there could be something else going on, but for now, it is good news. Good news yes. today. Yes, hey, give us a bit of a scare, puppy doggy. Good girl, puppy. You good girl. It's been a big day, a lot of emotion. So now we're gonna go home and try and have a relaxing night, and Bear is on the bed tonight with lots of cuddles. <laughs> Back home with partner Will, Danny is doing her best to stay positive and plans to start Bear on medication to hopefully ward off any further seizures. One step at a time, eh, puppy? Oh, oh, this... oh, it's all right, it's all right, Bear. It's okay, it's okay, puppy, it's okay. Just let her go, let her go, let her go. Oh, boy. Oh. The next day in Melbourne, yeah, yeah, oh, it's another traumatic morning for Danny and partner Will. It's okay, Bear, it's okay. Good girl, it's all right. So this morning, Will and I were woken to Bear having another seizure. It's all right. Shh. It's okay, Bear. Shh. This is a really strong one. It was a fairly long seizure as far as her right. time frame um, usually goes. So it was a more severe one this morning, which is a bit concerning. It's okay, puppy. Shh. Yeah, it's disappointing that we're still having seizures. You okay? You okay, Pop? It's okay. Pretty distressing. So yeah, it's hard to see. Poor bear. Long time. Hey, bear. It's okay, puppy. Hello. Okay, hi. Hello. Thank you. You are. We started her on medication, but I'm really concerned that we have not got adequate control. And I think the next step uh, is going to be getting a brain MRI. We've exhausted everything now. 
she's had the highest dose of both medications as frequently as she can have them. So that's not working. Yeah. So we need to act on this because otherwise, if she continues to have more seizures within 24 hours, that's when it becomes dangerous. Yeah. Prolonged seizures in dogs or any left untreated can lead to brain damage or even death. So the reason I want to get an, a brain MRI scan done is to see if there's anything structurally going on in the brain, like something like a brain tumour. Uh, so we need to rule that out before we continue progressing with just medical management. Yeah, puppy. Six-year-old Bear is back to her old self. You see Bear? Much to the relief of Danny and husband Will. Bear ended up having her brain MRI, which all came back clear, which was fantastic news and a huge relief. Oh, catch me. Since then, we've just been trying to titrate her medication to get the right dose to control those seizures. And I'm happy to say that they are well controlled now. So she does have them every now and again, but very infrequent. So it's a really good result, thank goodness. I had a call from the police. You know, this is a strange one. Apparently, they've discovered a snake on a road in the suburbs. They've managed to catch it, but they're saying that it looks hurt. So I'm on my way now to investigate what's going on. How are you going? How are you? I'm Chris. Hey, Bruce. Hey, Bruce. How are you? Brendan. Hey, Brendan. How are you going? Good. Now, where is it? Okay. So, so you found him just around here, did you? Just in front of the car. Yeah. A couple of guys next door. Found him just under across the road. Mate Simon and Ashton managed to catch the snake after discovering it on the road. I was driving past and I thought someone was playing a uh, practical joke on the road here with a big rubber snake. So uh, I did a U-turn and came back and it raised its little head and had a little bit of a hiss and we went, that's definitely a snake and we'd better call someone who's got more of an idea than what we do. Not gonna lie to you, I'm a little bit out of the comfort zone. Jeez, look at that. It looked pretty serious. It, it's hard to know exactly what that is, but it's popped out its kayak, so out its back end. Mm. And I mean, it could be anything from a bit of intestine to its penis, even a testicle or a kidney. But that shouldn't be there. The best thing to do is probably to get him back to the vets and give him a full check over and just see what's actually going on with it. The encouraging thing for me right now is just how active he is. He's certainly wriggling around, but each time he does that, he produces more lactic acid. And for a reptile, lactic acid is the enemy that's caused by stress, too much of it, and it will kill him. Hi. Thanks for getting up. It's 2 a.m. when Chris and the Diamond Python arrive back at the Bondi Clinic. Do you like snakes? Love him. Are you really? Wow. He's woken vet nurse Ali to help treat the hit-run victim. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, he's stunning, isn't he? Thought for a second, maybe, I have to step up and be the big, tough guy. No. Ali loves snakes. No tough guy required, which is sort of lucky, really. His name's Neil. I decided that. Everything. Neil Diamond. <laughs> yeah. When I suggested Neil Diamond as a name, I thought, oof, bit daggy, but we'll just get away with it. Turns out Ali's a fan. One day the bad names will stop, but <laughs> until that day, Neil. What is that? Well, just on its position, the fact it's got that little stalk there, Instead of it being something like a kidney or a, or a testy, I think it's, it's a scent gland. Snakes have two scent glands, which enable them to mark territory and attract a mate. We're going to have to remove this. Mm -hmm. But you can see also he's got a little bit of extra stuff poking out through his, his bottom here as well. Yeah. So we're actually going to have to try to shrink that down. Put some sugar in here. That's some water. I do with the sugar is if we make it really strong into a paste that we have here mm -hmm. and put it over the top of this, then the sugar actually draws all the fluid out and actually okay. shrinks this up. It's actually now popped itself back in, so the sugar's done the job. All done, little buddy. See? Hmm? It's all right, isn't it? He's been through a lot of stress tonight. He needs warmth, he needs a nice heat lamp, and he just needs to calm down. If he can do that, 
then he might just recover. There you are. You know what, mate? You're looking good, you're looking fresh, looking relaxed. Three days later, while hit-run victim Neil Diamond is resting up at the Bondi Clinic, Chris receives a present from a secret admirer. <laughs> Where have these come from? Looking around the room for anyone whose face might be giving something away. You're a secret admirer, then, Uh, yeah. This one's a <laughs> The crew's saying it's not them, but I know the truth. This is a stitch up. If there's a snake in here, someone will die. No snake in the box and no answer as to who sent Chris the flowers. But there's no time for further inquiries. It's a big day, buddy. Rehab's over. Right now, Neil Diamond is very impatient to leave the clinic. He's eaten, he's put on some weight. He looks happy and pain-free, so for me, it's time for me to go. When you think back, it has been quite a journey for Neil. He was run over by a car, had an encounter with the law, a vacation in Bondi over the summer, but now he's here, where he belongs. It's just stunning against that green background. It's, it's beautiful. In Brisbane, Audrey and Allison's mobile vet business means they're on call 24-7. So Cody just called and he was really frantic, really upset. Tonight they've had an urgent distress call from one of their regular clients. He said something about they've just got a new pet and it's really sick, he's really concerned and worried. So it sounds quite urgent. Al, have you got the keys? Yep. So it's really important whenever we get these emergency calls to try and get as much information as we can. But sometimes they're so frantic we can only get bits of information. So we don't really know what we're going to, but it sounds urgent. Hello, Cody. How are you? Okay, where is this patient? This is Roddy the rat. A rat? A rat. A rat. We didn't know it was You a got a rat. rat. <laughs> Partners Cody and Jake are brand new rat dads. They've only had Roddy for two weeks. We are shocked to see that we're actually dealing with a rat, mainly because we were expecting a dog or a cat. Hi, Roddy the rat. You're very friendly. How long have you had him for now? So I've had him for about two weeks now. Two weeks? Yeah. And he's only eight weeks old? He's, um, he's just creeping up on to ten weeks. Ten, ten weeks. What's up with him? So, over the past couple of days, he's been sneezing a fair bit. Thought it was cute to start with, but then it kept going. And then the next day, it was just sneeze after sneeze, and then definitely got a bit worried at that point. Any discharge? I haven't noticed any, no. Yeah. But it's odd to see him not really moving around as yeah. much. He's always jumping up at the cage when yeah. I go up to him normally. So sneezing in a rat can definitely mean something quite serious. It could be a nasty infection, it could be a tumour, or something in the environment that's really affecting their lungs. His breathing is a little bit fast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's quite laboured as well. With rats, they have a very, very delicate lung and airways. Their little tiny cilia, which is kind of like their little filters or the little hairs in their airways, can get really easily damaged with infection. We've got to make sure that everything in the cage is dust free. You can see that we've got good substrate for the yeah, bedding, which is good. great. Let's get him out. Oh God, he's so tiny. Hey, Papa. I can see why you got him. He's that really cute. Yeah, <laughs> like how they hold their food in their front hands, they're cute. You know, and just a little cool friend to have on your shoulder. So the chest sounds clear. Uh, so that I don't hear any crackles or wheezes, any fluid in the chest, but certainly I can hear a lot of turbulence. So when he's breathing, I can hear a lot of turbulence coming from his upper airways. So I think Cody and Jake were absolutely right in feeling a bit panicked and calling us out tonight because obviously these things can turn in a second, especially in such a young rat. Everything is minuscule. Right on this side. I'm just going back to this side. Oh, his left nostrils also got more discharge. So we know in rats with nasal discharge and sneezing, 
that is indicative of infection, particularly a respiratory infection called mycoplasma. And it is a bacterial infection that they tend to pick up in the pet shop when they're around quite a lot of other rats as well. Roddy urgently needs antibiotics. The twins also want to try him on a nebulizer to help unclog the congestion, which is severely compromising his airways. But the girl's usual nebulizer is designed for much bigger patients. In a dog or human, we'll have like a mask that this sort of covers the face and the nose so they can inhale. But it ain't built for a rat. Audrey and Alison are going to have to do some late night improvisation. We've got some water bottles in this one up here. Okay, let's try. I was very curious to see what they were going to put together for him because he is very small. You don't mind it having rat in it. That's, yeah, that's the main thing. I didn't know a rat could be put on a nebulizer to start with. <laughs> Look at that. A large drink bottle is the perfect rat size for a makeshift chamber. You're willingly going to crawl into a water bottle. Vaporized saline can be pumped in and hopefully help Roddy start to breathe a bit easier. So you see it's like aerolizing the, the saline. After only a few minutes on the nebulizer, Roddy's already more active. All right, you can return him. Oh, let's go over. Oh, one second. <laughs> Off to bed. So we expect an improvement in the next 72 hours. He's got a course of five days to do that nebulization and the antibiotics, but we expect to see improvement every single day. Bye, Roddy. Okay. So you're all sorted. Now that she's met the newest member of the household. So mm. Nix, how's our Tiggs going? Alison is keen to check up on their other pet, Tiggs the cat. How is she dealing with the new addition? Not well. You don't like your rat friend? <laughs> what do you think about your new friend? Tiggs is one of my favourite patients. Alison first met Tiggs when the boys needed advice on how to control the curvaceous kitty's weight. She's a rescue cat. Everyone talks about her and loves her, so definitely a big part and of people's lives and big is yeah, the key word there. <laughs> come on, get it. Oh, come on, it's right there. We want to make sure that Tiggs loses weight gradually so we don't put too much strain and stress on the liver. And Cody and Jake are trying their hardest and they're getting there slowly. Oh, I just be friends. It's the first time the twins have treated mortal enemies, a cat and a rat in the same household. Has she tried to do anything to him at all? Um, no. She looks at him. You're just working out your plan, aren't you? She does walk around, she stares at him at times, she does lick her lips. Not a typical relationship that we see every day in consult, but I think over time Tiggs may warm to Roddy. I mean, they're both really calm patients and as long as Cody and Jake manage that and put a barrier between them when they need to, I think they'll get on fine. Hi, I'm Dr. Kate, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen for more great content. And for free, exclusive, never seen before Bondi Vet stories, you can sign up to bondipet.com, and you can do so via the link in the description.